Hey guys, Tom here again from serumpresets.com and in this tutorial for Serum we're going to be looking at making from scratch um, a future house base um, similar to that by like Oliver Heldins, um, to Charmy, stuff like that. Um, I'll just quickly demonstrate what the sound actually sounds like. So you might recognize that melody, it's actually a melody from the Tachami, I think that's how you say his name anyway, it's spelled like that. Um, his remix of a song by Mercer called Turn It Up, which is a really cool track. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, this is just um, a really simple, I guess it's kind of future house, um, this is kind of a genre that's sprung up over the last um, few months and funnily enough Tachami actually says it was a bit of a joke when he like tagged his tracks as Future House but it's kind of caught on um, and it's kind of a bit of its own thing now. Um, so before making this um, an init patch so we can begin making it from scratch I'll just quickly mention um, as you can see here this is base 92 um, it's actually base 92 from my future house pack for serum that I've recently just released um, it has 128 future base sounds in that um, that I think you'll really find helpful to kind of de deconstruct and kind of learn how to make these sounds um, and also it's just a collection of really good mix ready sounds like this that you can use straight away in your tracks so um, if, if these type of type of sounds are your thing um, go ahead and check the preset pack out over at um, serumpresets.com or click the link in the description below and there's a full description of what's included um, along with an audio demo of some of the sounds in there as well so thanks in advance if you decide to purchase that um, but without further ado Let's go ahead and initialize our preset here. Um, so we're just going to switch OSC A off for now and we're actually just going to start off in the sub oscillator. Um, and the first thing we're going to make sure we do is click this direct out button here. Um, this is a really cool function within Serum that allows you to route the audio from the sub oscillator straight out um, of the synth into your DAW. Um, now the really cool thing about this is um, so in this sound we're going to be using um, a filter, we're going to be using um, um, a lot of effects like compression, um, the hyper dimension um, effect, um, EQ and reverb and, and stuff like that. So the last thing we want to happen is for the low end or the sub of the sound, which is obviously really important in a bass sound, to um, be modified in any way by any of the effects that we add later. Um, so just clicking direct out here is a really great way to make sure that your sub stays consistent um, within the sound. Um, we're also um, just gonna we're just gonna keep the uh, basic sine wave. A lot of people um, overthink the sub of the sound and spend ages trying to get it right. Really, you can't get any purer than um, a sine wave. So um, just bear that in mind. And we're just gonna um, move this down an octave. Obviously, um, it will depend on the MIDI notes that you're inputting into Serum. I think I'm using around somewhere around middle C, so like the middle octave. Um, but the main thing to bear in mind is that the sub oscillator and oscillator A are going to be um, the same octave. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're also just going to make sure that the amplitude level for this sub oscillator is at max And then we're going to dive into the main part of the sound which is going to be oscillator A um, So as I mentioned, we're going to move this down uh, minus one octave as well So that um, oscillator A and the sub oscillator are both the same octave um, Now the wavetable we're going to use for this sound is actually a digital wavetable. It's this FM FM wavetable and I'm not going to get too much into this because I am going to do a separate tutorial on how to use FM synthesis within Serum to create a bass sound but essentially all you need to know is that this wavetable is essentially um, what the, the result of um, using a sine wave to um, frequency modulate another sine wave and you get something that looks similar to this. Um, like I said I'm going to be doing a separate tutorial on that but just make sure that you've got this wavetable um, selected. The next thing we're going to do to thicken the sound up a little bit is um, and make it sound um, a, a little bit more full bodied. Um, we're just going to increase the unison to um, 7. Um, if you're not aware of what unison is, essentially it's the amount of voices an oscillator um, has. Um, so if we set this to a unison of 7, we're going to hear 7 different versions of the sound that are all slightly detuned from one another. And that basically um, psychoacoustically creates an image in our head 
um, that the sound is wider and fuller, um, specifically because of this detune. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is bring this um, random amount all the way down. By default in Serum, it's full. Um, and if you hover over it, it kind of explains what it is. So the random um, knob basically determines how random the start position in a new waveform is. Um, and that means per voice. So if this is set um, at random um, all the way full, um, every voice that's triggered by this oscillator um, is going to start at a different point on the waveform. Now, this is essentially implemented um, into Serum because if every voice um, starts at exactly the same point, you can sometimes get this like laser effect, which in a lot of sounds is kind of unwanted, especially when it comes to like uh, lead sounds and pads and keys. But um, it, when, when we're creating bass sounds, um, we want every bass hit to be completely consistent. Um, and the actual sound that it generates because of every voice starting at the same time is actually a nice sound, as I'll demonstrate in just a second. Um, so basically, just make sure that the random knob is all the way to 0%, so every voice is going to be triggered um, at the same point. Um, the next thing we are going to do is um, we're actually going to use the LFO in envelope mode in the sound to modulate um, a few different parameters uh, within the sound. So if I just bring this curve down a little bit, um, we just basically want a kind of pluck-like um, envelope to the LFO. Now the first thing we're going to use the LFO to modulate is going to be um, the detune parameter um, in oscillator A. So as I mentioned already, um, the individual voices within oscillator A um, set by the unison can be heard separately because of the detune. And what I find is a really cool effect um, in, in, to use in, in some bass sounds, and quite a lot of bass sounds actually, um, is modulating the amount that those voices are detuned um, by dragging and dropping an LFO or an envelope um, onto the sound. I'll just quickly demonstrate what this sounds like so far. So it might not be that audible at the minute, um, but essentially what this means is that at the start of the sound when it's triggered, we're going to hear the voices um, separate, but then towards the end of the sound, um, they're going to come together, which it has a really, really cool effect. Um, the next thing we're going to do is use the um, same um, LFO to modulate the wavetable position uh, within oscillator A. So if I click the... Um, the screen here, you can see what the uh, wavetable as a whole um, looks like. So we can actually see um, within Serum you can have up to 256 single cycle uh, waveforms um, in a wavetable. So essentially what this is going to do over time is cycle through these different waveforms but really, really quickly. Um, and that just adds a little bit of extra texture to the sound. Really, really great for modern um, bass sounds. You get a lot of modulation. Um, and it's just a really nice way to kind of um, add a lot more texture to sounds. So um, next, let's see. So um, we've set up basically everything we want to do in oscillator A. We're just going to turn the amplitude level up a little bit. Um, the next thing we want to do is set our envelope one here, which by default in Serum is the amplitude envelope. So these future house bass sounds, as I've dem uh, demonstrated at the beginning of the video, um, usually quite plucky in nature. Um, it takes a lot of influence from some like old school um, UK garage and uh, deep house um, bass sounds that are like really plucky. Um, so as mentioned, envelope one by default is the amplitude envelope. And we're just going to bring down the sustain here and just give it a little bit of release so you can see the amplitude over time is like plucky in nature. But the other thing we're going to do just to add even more polish to the sound is just increase the attack a little bit. So the start of the sound won't be as sharp, it won't have much of an attack. But the reason we're doing this is because um, a really nice effect just to make the bass sound really cut through the mix a little bit more is to um, switch the noise oscillator on get another envelope and make it really sharp um, and we're just, we're just going to use the um, high pass chorus um, J106 noise because I really like that that noise it's like really quite pure There's, it's not very muddy um, and then we're just going to use this um, second envelope here to um, control the amplitude of the noise so we've 
increase the attack of envelope 1 and we've now got a really sharp noise attack which means that the noise is basically going to give the sound um, a much sharper attack than it would have normally so I'll just quickly demonstrate what this sounds like let me just bring the octave down a bit So you can hear the noise at the beginning of the bass on there. Just gives it a really nice um, sharp attack. Now, because later in, in the sound we are going to be using multiband compression, which is going to bring out a lot of the highs and mids in the sound, I'm actually just going to move the amplitude um, of the noise right down um, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that um, later um, but the next thing we're going to implement into the sound is this filter now we're just going to use the basic Moog low pass 12 dB filter here um, and we're just going to bring the cutoff all the way down and then we're going to use the same um, LFO that we use to modulate the detune and wavetable position of oscillator A um, for the cutoff frequency of the filter and we're just going to bring this down a little bit and as I mentioned earlier, um, these Future House bass sounds really have quite a pluck-like nature to them. And to emphasize this further, um, we can use a pluck-like envelope um, to modulate the cutoff frequency of our low-pass filters. I'll quickly demonstrate here. So already the the um, the sound is really shaping up here, um, and that that is really what makes um, most of the character of the sound is this modulation of the cutoff frequency. Um, so that's pretty much um, everything for the base of the sound. Um, from here, you could really add um, any effects that you want, but for the sake of this tutorial, um, I'm just going to show you what I did um, in the effects section of the sound when I created this preset for the preset pack. Um, the first thing I added was this hyper dimension effect. Now, we're not using the dimension section of the effect because the mix is actually all the way at zero, um, but we are going to use the hyper section of the effect. Now, what this does is actually really similar to what the unison does in an individual oscillator, but for the whole sound. Um, so it essentially uses unison to create multiple versions of the sound and then like spreads them out because they are detuned so we perceive the sound as being thicker. Now I, I don't want this to be a too extreme effect otherwise the image becomes a bit um, unclear but I'm just, so I'm just going to bring the mix down a little bit um, and it might not be very audible but I'll just quickly demonstrate that this makes it sound a bit thicker. <laughs> So it just really helps um, like subtly make the sound a lot fuller. Um, it's a lot more um, kind of noticeable if you're listening through um, some really nice monitors or really nice headphones. Um, the next thing we're going to add is um, just some multiband compression. So we're going to just simply click the multiband option here. And essentially when we click multiband and increase the gain, what's going to happen is the um, mids and highs of the sound are going to be a lot more present as I'll just demonstrate. So that's with multiband compression and then I'll switch it off. And again with multiband compression. So it just really helps polish um, up the sound and especially um, for this kind of genre where when the track drops there's not really much going on, you want the bass sound to be really, really um, present in the mix. Otherwise um, the mix is going to end up sounding a little bit empty. Um, the next thing we're going to do is just add some reverb. Now we've already rooted the sub oscillator directly out of the synth so th that part of the sound isn't going to be going through the reverb but our oscillator A here which is also at minus one octave um, is going to be going through the reverb. Um, the issue with this is if you send um, a lot of low frequencies through a reverb or a delay or something like that what's going to happen when um, it replicates those low frequencies is the sound becomes very muddy um, and this is something that you want to avoid at all costs um, especially 
especially when it comes to the mixing stage of your track later on. So a great way to avoid that, um, but still have reverb on your sound, is to just increase this low cut parameter here. And what this is going to do is just bypass a lot of the low frequencies that would be routed through the filter um, otherwise. Um, so that's just a really great way to do that. Um, I'll just quickly demonstrate what the sound sounds like with reverb. Uh, we don't want it to be too present on the sound, so I'm going to bring the mix down a little bit and the size down a little bit. So that just um, like adds a little bit more um, wetness to the sound. Like when when um, like I mentioned earlier, in a future house drop, there's not really much going on. So adding just a little bit of um, a little bit of reverb to the sound really helps to fill out the mix a little bit. And um, the next thing we're gonna do um, is just add some EQ, and we're just gonna use this to boost some of the high end even further. Um, we can just use the default parameter here and just increase the gain. Um, we only want it to be like right at the high end of the sound, just to add a bit of Christmas, um, Christmas, <laughs> um, crispness. Sorry. It just helps the bass sound um, cut through the mix um, a little more. Um, I'm just going to bring the amount that this is being modulated down a little bit because it is a little bit too detuned. And there you have it, um, a really nice, um, clean future bass sound, uh, future house sound, sorry. Um, it's really, really um, nice, it, it really cuts through the mix a lot, um, and it's really not too difficult to make. Um, so hopefully you got some use out of this tutorial. Um, I really like creating sounds like this, and I really enjoy creating these tutorials for you guys. So um, if you have any requests for other sounds, or any questions about this sound, or anything like that, feel free to leave some comments down below. Um, if you haven't already, feel free to sub subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, it really helps support me and you'll be able to stay up to date with any new tutorials that I bring out. Um, last but not least, again, if you haven't already, go over to um, serumpresets.com um, and check out my um, preset packs, um, especially my Future House one, which has 128 bass sounds um, for this kind of style of music. Um, and I think you'll really get a lot of use out of that. Again, um, go to serumpresets.com or click the link in the description below. There's a full description of what you can expect from that um, and also um, a, five, a three minute audio demo on there as well with a lot of the bass on. So again, thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.